It's been another banner week on the Outlander set as filming wrapped bringing us that much closer to the summer premiere of season 7. And aren't we lucky? The cast and crew were prolific in their picture taking and in their sharing of videos. From the looks of it, great times were had as they celebrating the end of a grueling schedule including early mornings, late nights and another season is now ready to be carefully edited and put together just for us. Because we are just that awesome. Hi and welcome back to Katie's Corner in Space as we celebrate with great exuberance the completion of week 43 of Droughtlander. I don't believe it. I just can't get over this crazy weight we are enduring and how much easier it is together. So once again, I want to just take a quick moment and thank each of you for helping me and each other get through this difficult time. And one way I'll be thanking you very shortly is by gifting one lucky viewer with their very own Droughtlander Survivalist stickers and mug. But that won't be for a few more days, so keep an eye out for a special release on the 3rd. That's this Friday. But first, the reason we're all here, and let's just take another look at these great wrap-up party images and some of those behind the scenes shots we've been privileged to see over these last several months. They've brought curiosity and clues, along with some joy and smiles as we're slowly shown new actors joining the familiar faces to return. Altogether, making Season 7 one of the most anticipated premieres to come. Of course, enjoying Season 7 will be much easier if we all have a shot at Season 6. And that opportunity is coming to Netflix Australia this March. That's right, March 7th brings Outlander to Sassanax Down Under as Australia, New Zealand and select other countries will be able to binge all six seasons from one spot. And I've really enjoyed the stories you've shared as to how to watch Outlander where you are. Linda Grace 3055 says she's watched using streaming service, which has been a hit and miss situation. First watching with Prime, then Stars for a short time. While Gopher Lynn has Sean Limited TV plus W Network and is able to watch Outlander on W. Now, Tallulah watches each season in French and then in English, taking care to listen to the accents of the characters as well. Myself, I shall share since last year I broke down and got stars and really was just going for the free trial through the season six airing. But then I really enjoyed so many other shows on stars, I've just kept it. Plus, it's a great source for clips for this channel, so probably keeping it for the time being. However you watch, one thing is certain, Outlanders want access to their show. So again, when it comes to where and when to watch, I'll do my best to keep you updated. And Diana will keep us thirsty for more as our favorite author set out to wet our whistles for yet another writing endeavor, this time concerning everyone's favorite roaming husband, Frank. Just in case you ever wondered what exactly Frank knew, how much, and when he made the discoveries concerning Jamie's fate, a fact of the matter nearly glossed over in the series, but hinted at much more clearly in the books. Then Diana's excerpt is exactly the teaser you've been waiting for. In this post, Diana makes it clear it's just jotted thoughts, not edited, but is definitely copywritten. She introduces the idea of Frank's considerations concerning the situation he finds himself in in her new book, a husband with a wife who's lived out of time and has another husband out in the ether of time. And Frank, armed with his education as a historian, has the means to discover the fate of this other man. We'd gotten to know Frank as a historian when we first met him, and Roger displayed the need of a historian to know, to discover the truth. And so it only seems logical, Frank too would be... I'm like a dog with a bone. 
but on a much more personal level. Now we may see how and when he found out Jamie's supposed fate and possibly an elaboration on the erection of the gravestone in the books. So I'm looking forward to this book in particular. Oh, but I certainly wouldn't want to leave out one of my favorite Outlander alum who is looking fit and celebrating a birthday tradition, albeit a bit late, by having a few push-ups with the assistance of one of his daughters. And like all parents, he takes a moment to comment at the fact that she has become an adult in a blink. A fact we all must accept as parents, my son just bought his first house. I was all good with being a grandmother twice and soon to be three times over, but somehow my son buying a house last month just did me in. Ah well, time for a mental toddy. Look, puppy. As the rap news really filled the online space this week, I thought we could take a look back at a chat with Meryl and Matthew on the completion of season six and all of its challenges. How do you adjust as writers and producers to you know, the outside world inflicting itself upon your show. Season six, you, you definitely hit on it. It, it, was, it was more challenges that we thought we would ever have to endure. Thankfully, we have an amazing production team in Scotland. We don't usually start shooting in January, which we did in season six, which cha the challenge of light and weather really hit us hard. Um, our cast and crew embraced that. And it got it just beautiful, beautiful shots when the snow came. So what are three words that you guys were used to describe this season? Three words. I'd say betrayal. Oh, God, devastation and turmoil. Yeah. Matt, what I'd would say, you say? I say hold your breath. So part of the reason we're holding our breath is because of the introduction of uh, Tom Christie and everything that he represents. He feels he's so righteous and right about everything that he's doing and he has God at his back. You know, Jamie's hoping against hope that, that Tom has changed over the 20 years. And of course, the link to the full interview can be found below. There is one other spot of alum news that I'm sure you'll not be surprised to get from me, but for all of my Stephen Bonnet, Ed Spilliers fans out there, as you know, I also follow the Star Trek universe, and our young Ed has gone from one fandom to another, which has been super fun for me, obviously. However, his new role on Star Trek is oddly fitting. While playing a generally good guy on Star Trek Picard, working in the medical field of all things, his character seems to have some similarities to our pirate bonnet. The people who dislike me are, are gamblers, low-level gangsters, the fathers of daughters everywhere. At worst, I'm a thief. And I just had to share that bit with you. I'm glad to see him in a role this time that doesn't make me want to slug him among other violent acts, and I'm particularly excited to see what becomes of Picard's son. Because he's my son. Oh yeah, he's Picard's long-lost son with Dr. Crusher, so yeah. I'm having a blast with that. And that's all I've got this week, folks. And with the wrap, I'm unsure what these updates will look like in the near future, but do not despair. I'm sure I'll come up with something. I have a whole week and a few ideas to celebrate the year anniversary of this channel. Until then, please enjoy this video or that one, and I'll see you there.